In this week's Tableau Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to use level of detail expressions to count different items within a certain region. So for example, we may want to count the number of states that exceed a certain threshold, or the number of customers within a region that are profitable. So let's see how we do that in Tableau. The first thing I want to do is I need to have region as a geographic field. So I know each region has made up of a set of states. So I can right click on region, go down geographic role, create from, and choose state. I'm going to go ahead and put country in my hierarchy as well. Now when I double click on region, <clears throat> I get a nice little map. I'm going to go ahead and make it a filled map. And for the purposes of this example, I'm going to just go ahead and get rid of all of the map layers. So I'm going to wash it out completely. And there we go. Okay. And I'm going to, I like having nice little borders between my, between my regions. So what I want to do now is I want to count the states within each region that exceed a certain threshold. Now I want the user to be able to pick the threshold. So I'm going to go ahead and create a parameter that allows them to do that. So I'm going to say enter a threshold. And I'm going to let them kind of type in whatever they want. <clears throat> so I'll leave it as all, and that's fine. Go ahead and show that parameter control. And let's say we started at 10,000. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to count the number of states within each region that exceed 10,000. So I'm going to create a calculated field, and I'm going to call it states above threshold. And I want to use a level of detail expression here. So state is not in my view, but I need to count state. So I'm going to fix my level of detail at the state level. And I want to sum up the sales. <clears throat> and then I want to compare that. So close my level of detail expression with mustachio. And I'm going to say that's less than or equal to 10,000. OK, so uh, all that's going to do is give me a true false. So if I go ahead and put that on color, you'll see I get a bunch of trues and a bunch of falses. But now notice how they're overlapping. If I put state into the view, you'll see it a bit better. So let me go ahead and put in. You'll see, so in the west region, I have some states that exceed the threshold and some that do not. But I don't want to have state in the view, and I just want to count them. So let me take that back off the view. So I can change my states above th uh, threshold, and I could just wrap this entire thing and an integer. So it's going to basically count the number of things that are true. So I'm going to go ahead and make that a measure. And I'm going to drag that up to my color shelf. And now we can see the number of states in each region that make up that number. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my mark labels and make them nice and big so we can see what they're doing. OK, so there we go. So this is telling me that I have four states in the west region that have more than 10,000, or that have less than or equal. I should have made this more than 10,000 in sales. So let me, I wrote this wrong, so it should be greater than or equal to 10,000. <coughs> Hit OK. And now there's seven states that exceed 10,000. So let's go ahead and verify that that's working correctly. So I'm going to just first filter down to my west region and bring state into the view, and then sales. And I know my threshold is 10,000, so I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that are above 10,000, and I get seven here. Great, that's working perfectly. Okay, <clears throat> so we could then extend this. So this is our uh, state's exceeding threshold. And the good thing about this is I can then, um, I can go ahead and parameterize this. So because I did that, I can say how many are above 25,000. And, oh, I messed up my calculation, so I need to edit my calculation. This should be using the parameter. I manually typed the number in. And now we can see there's four states in the west region that exceed 25,000. How about 50,000? And I get two, four, three, and three. All right, how about 100,000? All right, so the south has none. And there are two in the east, one in the central, and two in the west. OK, so this is a good way to allow the users to kind of answer a very specific question. Uh, so um, great. So now what I want to do is I can go ahead and maybe create a couple different examples of this. So let's say we want to know the number of customers that are in each region that, have, that exceed that sales. So let's go ahead and clear this sheet. I'll just go ahead and start by duplicating this one. So I'm going to say customers exceeding threshold this time. 
Okay, so I have region in the view, that's fine. Uh, but I want to, instead of this being states above threshold, I want it to be customers. So let's say customers above threshold. And I'm now gonna need to do it by region. Region, if I could spell, and customer. The reason I wanna include region this time <clears throat> is because I could have a customer that goes across regions. So they might have sales in one region uh, in the west region and then some other sales in the east region. So I can now put that on my color shelf and I can, I'm using the same parameter, but I have 12 customers that have sold more, that, um, that have bought more than 5,000 in goods from us. So if I change it to 10,000, you can say I only have one customer in the west. So if I go ahead and look at that person, I can see who that is. So uh, let's see, oh, that's, sorry, that's not the right, right way to do it. So let's go ahead and do our verification again. So let's look at the West region. Oops, West region. And let's look at customer name and sales. And I'm gonna sort that descending. And if I go back over, I was looking at 10,000. So I only have one customer in the East that exceeds 10,000. Great, that's working perfectly. Okay, so um, maybe what else we could do is we could, uh, let's say we wanna count, uh, let's say we have a scatter plot. So we wanna look at maybe the average discount and we wanna compare that to you know maybe a profit or something like that. And um, what I want to do is I want to parameterize this so I can let the user determine um, what, uh, how many dots they see in the view. So I'm going to go ahead and create a parameter. I'm going to say select uh, level of detail. And I'm going to make it a list. I'm going to start by with maybe state um, subcategory. Um, what else? Um, let's see what other options we have here. And let's say um, customer. All right. So now I'm going to create a calculated field that returns those values. So uh, level of detail. Uh, let's call this um, dimension selected. And I want to say if my selected level of detail, or actually I could do a case statement this time when they pick state, then I want to return the state field. <clears throat> when they pick uh, subcategory, then I want to return subcategory. And when they pick customer name, then I want to return customer name. Okay, so let's hit okay. And let's go ahead and uh, drag that onto the detail shelf and let's show our parameter control. Okay, so we have state, subcategory. Okay, so this isn't particularly interesting, so maybe I'll put sales on here instead of profit. Uh, okay, so we see subcategory, customer name, et cetera. There we go. Okay, so I'm looking at uh, sales versus discount, and I'm gonna go ahead and drag my threshold onto the marks card because I wanna go ahead and add a reference line that shows me where that is. So. I'm going to put my threshold. Um, the label, let's go ahead and put the value on that. No tooltip. And I'm just going to make it a line just that makes it a bit easier to see for this example. Okay, so now uh, let's go ahead and make those circles. And I like them to be a bit more transparent. Okay, so <clears throat> what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to count this number of customers. So I have 20, um, in this case, customers that are exceeding that threshold. So how can I go about doing that? So um, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create a calculated field. I'm going to say um, dimension, if I could spell, members exceeding threshold. So what I want to do here is I want to fix it on my dimension selected and I'm looking at sum of sales and uh, I'm going to say that is greater than or equal to my, my uh, threshold, enter threshold. So that's just going to give me a true false and now I'm going to wrap that whole thing in an integer. 
Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and just put that on color, and we can see that these are all ones. Okay, great. But what I want to be able to do is just give a grand total. So, so for example, I want to say something like, uh, where's my field here? Members exceeding threshold exceed the threshold of, and I'm going to go ahead and put my threshold in here. Okay, so it says zero to one, right? <coughs> so that's basically uh, because I only have zeros and ones in the data set. So what I want to do now is I need to aggregate that. So I want to now count those. So sum, oops. So I'm going to start with a level of detail expression, and this is going to fix it on nothing. So think about that as giving me my grand total. Um, so this is going to say, Take all of the customers, um, and then uh, actually this is the wrong calculation. So I need to go to dimension members. Okay, so I want to say basically I want to get the grand total. So if I did fixed and then just a colon, and then add up all of the ones, that would just give me the grand total, right? So I can hit apply, and you'll see 20 exceeded the threshold of 10,000. But I also, just so you know, I don't have to have, if I don't specify fixed include or exclude and just do the sum, that's the same thing as doing just the fixed with nothing. So you can see now we have 20 members. If I lasso these, that should be 20 marks. Okay, great. Um, Okay, but maybe I, you know, something easier would be just to color code these uh, these customers above threshold. So let's uh, let's create a calculated field. I'm going to say above or below threshold. And <clears throat> in this case, what I want to say is I want to say sum of sales is uh, greater than or equal to threshold. That's it, just a boolean, and I'm going to put that on color. And there we go. So now we can see the number that are above or below, but I removed my dimension members. So there we go. So I have 20, um, and I can go ahead and specify my parameter as well. So select level of detail. So 20 customers exceed uh, exceed the threshold of 10,000. Right. So um, I just had a thought, my dimension members exceeding threshold. Um, I probably actually don't need to do this because um, I'm looking, I don't need to do this level of detail expression because I, I already have the dimension selected in the view. So I actually might be able to just say uh, some sales is greater than that. So let's hit OK. And uh, let's put, oh, I have an error message. So enter, uh, right, so cannot be aggregated further. Okay, so, um, right, okay, so uh, I'm not going to worry about fixing that now, so I'm just going to undo and put it back to the way I had it. Okay, so that's one axis, and then maybe we want to allow them to pick a threshold for the average discount. So let's create, uh, enter, uh, oh, sorry, I want to create a parameter, and enter discount threshold. And this time it's going to be a float. My display format is going to be a percentage. And uh, let's just set the default value to maybe uh, uh, 0.5 and hit OK. Show that parameter. And I can do the same thing. Now I want to know how many are above 50%. So let me make it a smaller number. That's fine. Leave it like that for now. So I want to say dimension members. So I'm going to duplicate this one. And I want to say dimension members exceeding uh, discount. OK, so instead of sum of sales here, I'm going to have average discount. And then instead of enter a threshold, I'm going to say uh, discount, enter discount threshold. OK, and uh, where are we here? So. Uh, I want to do enter a discount threshold in the view so I can add that as a reference line. So discount threshold, and I'll do the same thing like I did before for the other axis. So I made it like that. Oops. There we go. So we're creating sort of like a quadrant chart of sorts. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, right, so now I want to have uh, dimension selected 
there we go. So now I want to basically see how many customers have exceeded uh, both of those. So um, what I could do now is dimension members exceeding discount. So my above or below threshold, I could I could change this a bit. So I could say sum of sales better than threshold, or uh, let's see, I want to say and um, average discount is less than or equal to enter this whole. Okay, so that's going to give me ones that are in uh, in both. So let's say greater than. So this is going to be high sales, high discount, and you'll see they all go blue. But if I set this to maybe uh, 0.2, then we can see we now have four customers that have had an average discount of 20% uh, or more and have had sales greater than 10,000. So, okay. So that's good, um, and I can now count, since I've counted the number of uh, exceeding the discount, so I could say 20 customers exceed the threshold of 10,000 for sales, and uh, da -da -da, for discount. So uh, we know, oh, okay, and this number's wrong as well. So it says 20 customers. It's actually not 20, it should be four now. So um, I can count. So I have uh, four here, and if I look at my above or below threshold, I could just now count those. So um, instead of this being customers above threshold, I could, uh, oh no, sorry, that was for my, that was for my map. Um, let's go ahead and create another calculated field. So let's say high discount, high sales. And I just want to say int of the above or below threshold. Hit OK. And put that on detail. And now if we put that in the view instead, let's see what we get. So, um, and hit apply, we get zero to one again. That's because we need to, It's the customer is either above or below, so we need to count all of those as one block. So again, we're gonna wanna wrap this in a level of detail expression. So this is gonna give me the grand total. So let me put that, oh, I got an error message here. So some, what does it say here? Okay, so uh, int above or below threshold. Okay, so this field's already, ah, okay. So I don't think I need to do that. Um, let's try that and see what happens. Okay, and let's see what number we get now. Um, and let's insert the members high discount. Okay, and we're getting zero. Okay, that's because my calculation is wrong. <clears throat> so uh, let me see, let me just make this a window sum and uh, another bracket. Okay, so that looks good. I could put that on here instead edit my table calc, and I want to do it based on the selected dimension. So I should see uh, high discount is four, that's good. So now I can actually add that back in here. So four, uh, duh, 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 where is it here? Um, high discount, high sales. So four customers exceed the threshold of 10,000 for sales and discount. Okay, so good. Uh, and again, I can just move these around. So if I put this at 0.1, you know, and now I have 13 customers, I can change this to subcategory. And we now have nine subcategories exceeding the threshold, uh, nine, 10 states, etc. cetera. So um, hopefully you found that useful. I know I just kind of rambled on there a bit, but the idea was to show you how you can use um, level of detail expressions to count items within a view. So we started with just counting the number of states that are exceeding a threshold in each region. We then went on to the number of customers that were exceeding the threshold in each region. And we finished it up with a scatter plot that's letting us count customers that are either a, uh, that are high discount and high sales customers. So if you have any questions, let me know. Have a good day.